Thank you so much uh, for attending uh, this presentation. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk about Eclipse Micro Profile in the next 20 minutes, for the next 20 minutes. Uh, my name is uh, Cesar Saavedra. I'm a senior principal product marketing manager uh, here at Red Hat. So let's get started. So what is uh, Eclipse Micro Profile? It is an open source community specification uh, for enterprise uh, Java microservices. It's really a community of individuals, uh, organizations, and vendors collab collaborating within an open source, uh, in this case, the Eclipse Foundation, uh, to bring microservices to the enterprise uh, Java community. So this slide shows a few of the um, individuals, organizations, and vendors that are part of the MicroProfile community. Uh, Payara, Fujitsu, Tommy Tribe, IBM, Red Hat, of course, uh, Cumulus, uh, LJC, the London Java Group, Hammock, uh, So Java, which is a uh, Java group in Brazil, I believe, uh, Smart Bear, Hazelcast, and the community uh, keeps growing. I get this question often, what is the difference between uh, Eclipse Micro Profile and, and the JCP process uh, for uh, Java EE? Well, the, uh, first of all, the Eclipse uh, Micro Profile uh, it is, a, is an open source project and uh, it has a time boxed uh, release schedule and it's an increment, it, it focuses on incremental uh, feature release releases and it's control uh, the, and the pace is controlled by the community. Uh, on the other hand, the JCP uh, is a standards organization. Uh, it has a, a large multi-feature releases and, uh, and the spec lead uh, controls the pace of that specific uh, project or, or every specific project within the JCP. So this is uh, a picture that shows you um, the, uh, the release times uh, or the times between releases uh, when it comes to Java EE historically from uh, JPE, when it used to be called JPE. So as you can see, uh, the time between releases have been increasing uh, since Java EE 5 came out. And the reason, one of the reasons is that, uh, you know, they're focused on uh, standards, so, you know, they have to build consensus across the community, and, um, and again, you know, the, the coming up with standards uh, is, is a slower process uh, than, than, for example, an open source, open source project that moves uh, uh, at a faster pace. Uh, on the other hand, uh, MicroProfile is focused on accelerating adoption of microservices, so uh, as I mentioned before, the release uh, schedule calls for a, a, uh, a shorter time between releases, and, uh, and you know, three, you know, the goal is to put out about four to six releases per year. MicroProfile 1.0 uh, came out in September of last year, and it was the first release, uh, and uh, the community decided to just uh, include three Java EE uh, APIs in it. Uh, one of the reasons was because uh, they wanted the community to have uh, input and, feed and you know, be able to capture the feedback of the community as to uh, you know, the direction of micro profile and, and where to take it. The Eclipse Micro Profile 1.1 uh, came out in August of 2017 and it includes an API that is a non Java EE API, obviously. It's called the Config 1.0. And what does Config it want to solve or does it attempt to solve? Is as you move applications and microservices through different environments, for example, uh, from dev to test to production, uh, each environment will have its own configuration information. Uh, so this has been a challenge historically in application development in general. So Configuration 1.0 API attempts to address this solution. Uh, I'm sorry, this problem. Configuration uh, 1.0 did not, uh, was not uh, addressed or tackled uh, in isolation. Uh, the community looked at different existing solutions and uh, you know, based on uh, best practices and lessons learned, came up uh, with Configuration 1.0. Some of the project, projects that uh, served as uh, an inspiration or in, uh, influence uh, for Config 1.0 uh, are listed here, like Delta Spike, Apache Tamai, and others. And also, uh, the community considered uh, current implementations like Apache Geronimo, Config, and Web Serial Liberty as input to uh, the design of this specification. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, MicroProfile moves uh, at a much faster pace uh, than uh, the JCP. However, the uh, output of the uh, MicroProfile project, once an API uh, has uh, stabilized, I guess, or the community considered that is a good, uh, it could be served, uh, or it could serve uh, 
to belong in, in a standards community like the JCP, uh, it, it, it would take uh, that API and propose it to the JCP. And this happened uh, with configuration 1.0. Uh, it has now, actually it was proposed uh, last, last month to the JCP as a JSR, and it now is a, uh, an, a JSR uh, candidate. If you go to the um, JCP website, you'll see a brand new entry for config.1.0 uh, that comes from uh, MicroProfile. So what was in uh, MicroProfile 1.1? Uh, uh, it included obviously the first, uh, um, the initial APIs that were included in 1.0, plus the config 1.0 API, uh, and uh, it has, there's a PDF document that describes uh, config, as well as uh, it includes a TCK, a technology compatibility kit, uh, Java docs, uh, there's a spec document, API Maven artifacts and a Git tag. Eclipse MicroProfile 1.2 uh, actually um, is being announced right now as I, uh, as I speak over at the Eclipse Foundation booth. It was finished about a week and a half ago, I want to say, uh, but it's being officially announced today. And uh, in uh, 1.2, there are one update to an API, so config 1.0 has been updated to config 1.1, and it also includes uh, four extra APIs, uh, health check, uh, metrics, fault tolerance, and JWT propagation. Uh, health, health check um, has to do with uh, uh, basically an API that allows uh, you to implement a microservice and implement um, are you okay type uh, uh, functionality into your microservice and that's called uh, health check. Uh, metrics uh, includes uh, functionality uh, to measure um, uh, metrics, uh, you know, CPU, uh, RAM, and things like that. And there's a variety of, uh, of metrics that are being uh, uh, specified in the API as part of the metrics 1.0 um, API. Uh, fault tolerance has to do uh, with functionality related to bulkheads, uh, retries, to, to be able to include this, this type of functionality in your microservices. And JWT is related to security, so uh, you know, usually um, uh, well, we're using uh, uh, Java Web Token for this, uh, which is uh, uh, you know, an adequate uh, standard for uh, microservices security uh, for authentication and authorization. And uh, this API provides functionality that supports that. Actually, in fact, I have some slides on those. Uh, I got ahead of myself. So uh, again, metrics, um, adds uh, well-known monitoring endpoints uh, for each process, in this case, uh, your specific microservices. There is uh, three types of metrics. There's the base metrics, um, which are required. Uh, so if you're implementing this API in your microservices, uh, you have to at least uh, add functionality or implement these, uh, these uh, functions, methods, uh, the, uh, which are the base metrics. Then there's application metrics. Uh, uh, which are, are, are not required, but this, uh, these capture, uh, would capture business type um, metrics and vendor specific metrics. Uh, if uh, an implementer wants to have uh, something specific to their platform, then those metrics will fall under that. Again, just like in config, uh, we had um, uh, the, the community looked into uh, other projects, uh, to, you know, looking for best standards and lessons learned, and, and this is a list of the projects that they um, uh, were able to uh, to base uh, to, to study uh, in order to come up with a Metrics 1.0 API. Now, uh, one point of clarification: Metrics are different are different from health checks, uh, which are primarily targeted at a quick yes/no response uh, to is my application still running okay. Health checks are used to probe the state of a computing node uh, from another machine, for example, uh, a Kubernetes service controller, uh, with the primary target being uh, cloud infrastructure environments. The goals of the Health Check uh, API 1.0 API was to uh, be compatible uh, with well-known cloud uh, platforms, uh, in other words, Kubernetes. Uh, it it uh, had to be appropriate for machine-to-machine -machine communication, and uh, it should give you enough information uh, for a human administrator. Uh, fault tolerance uh, is another API that was introduced in, uh, in 1.2. Uh, this is uh, the API uh, or the functionality that, functionality that includes things like retry policies, uh, bulkhead uh, circuit breakers, 
and, and concepts uh, that are, uh, you know, fall within that type of um, uh, fault tolerant uh, concepts. And they di dictate uh, whether uh, uh, and when executions uh, should take place and fallbacks uh, uh, offer an alternative uh, result uh, when an execution does not complete successfully, for example. The uh, influence uh, projects uh, were Hysterix uh, and Failsafe. Failsafe, that's where the community looked uh, uh, for um, best practices as well as lessons learned. Uh, and the logic was to separate the responsibility of executing logic, um, like runnables and callables, uh, from guiding um, when executing, execution, I'm sorry, uh, should take place uh, through retries, uh, bulkheads, and circuit breakers. JWT propagation uh, is security, it's all about security requirements that involve uh, microservice architectures, um, uh, since they are related uh, to RESTful type security. Uh, in this style, servers are usually stateless and any security associ associated uh, with a client is sent to the target service uh, on every request in order to allow services to recreate a security context uh, for the caller and perform both authentication and authorization checks. Again, the, the community looks uh, for inspiration and uh, for best practices and um, lessons learned to OAuth2, uh, uh, OpenID Connect, and uh, JWT. Uh, and the goal was to, uh, to propagate, uh, of this API was to propagate the security state from clients uh, to services, uh, or even from services to services. Um, and for RESTful um, based microservices, uh, security token, tokens uh, offer a very lightweight and interoperable uh, way to propagate identities across different uh, services. So what's, what's in MicroProfile 1.2? Uh, again, uh, there was an update to config 1.1, which is listed here. Uh, health check 1.0 is there, metrics 1.0, fault tolerance, and JWT propagation. Uh, in this slide, uh, there are links for each of the product, um, uh, product pages, as well as uh, links to the uh, you know, TCKs, technology compatibility kits, the Java docs, the spec uh, PDF documents, API Maven artifacts, and Git tags. So uh, speaking of the future and roadmap, uh, MicroProfile 1.3 is scheduled to come out uh, later this year. And it, uh, the plan is to include functionality related to open tracing and open API. And, and MicroProfile 2.0, uh, also scheduled to come out uh, uh, later this year, will uh, we'll have updates to CDI, uh, JSONP, JAX-RS, and it will possibly contain uh, JSON-B uh, 1.0, which it will be part of uh, uh, JEE 8. So there are many uh, vendor implementations uh, for MicroProfile. For example, uh, on this chart, uh, you see that uh, Red Hat uses uh, Wildfly Swarm to implement uh, MicroProfile. Uh, which is an open source project. Uh, in fact, they're all uh, open source projects on this page. Uh, IBM uses Open Liberty, Tommy Tribe uses Apache Tommy, and Pyara uses uh, Glassfish to implement a uh, micro profile. Uh, there is uh, this application uh, that uh, was put together last year. It's called the Conference Application, and it's a combined effort uh, from all uh, uh, vendor implementers uh, of micro profile. Uh, that is, is basically a, uh, a, a, an application that, uh, you know, that uh, similar to like a conference like Java One, where you have sessions and you can, you know, you can build, uh, uh, pick, uh, pick sessions that you want to attend, uh, search sessions and, and things of that type. And uh, it's made up of different micro, uh, microservices. Um, and in this chart, for example, uh, there, were, there is a microservice and uh, Red Hat uh, developed the session microservice using Wildfly Swarm. The other vendors uh, uh, developed other microservices in their own um, uh, open source based uh, platforms. And then uh, they were all integrated into a single uh, UI. And uh, this basically showed and demonstrated 
the uh, interoperability uh, across different vendor implementations of MicroProfile, and this is a great, of great benefit uh, to uh, end users of MicroProfile. When it comes to uh, Red Hat uh, and MicroProfile, uh, you could uh, develop MicroProfile uh, based microservices, uh, obviously using Wildfly Swarm, which is uh, what we use at Red Hat. But you know, if you if you look at the uh, other offerings that we have in, in our portfolio, like Freescale, uh, uh, our Fuse integration uh, solution, or BPM Suite, for example, or Red Hat JBoss Data Virtualization, EAP Data Grid BRMS, or even Mobile Application Platform, all these offerings could potentially uh, use or call out or ma or manage uh, APIs that front uh, microprofile based microservices. Uh, also, uh, how does Red Hat deliver uh, MicroProfile? So, uh, OpenShift application runtimes is a uh, product um, uh, actually that, uh, uh, whose beta we announced uh, this week uh, here at Java One. And it's, uh, it's our offering that, uh, that is made up of many runtimes and it's our uh, multi-cloud, multi-tech application platform and modernization platform. It's made up of uh, many runtimes. Uh, for example, it has Apache Tomcat, uh, Node.js, uh, uh, Java EE in the form of uh, Red Hat's uh, JBoss EAP, a MicroProfile, uh, you know, implemented in Wallfly Swarm, and Vertex, which is uh, for reactive programming. This uh, chart um, is a very high level picture of uh, what Roar is. It also includes uh, certified versions of a Spring Boot, uh, Netflix OSS uh, ribbon and Hystrix. So I get this question often, uh, you know, what, so what's the difference between MicroProfile and Spring Boot uh, Cloud? So Roar, which is uh, Red Hat uh, OpenShift uh, application runtimes, includes both uh, MicroProfile and Spring Boot. So uh, you, uh, you know, by using Roar, uh, you basically have uh, all the run, if you're a, a Spring Boot or Cloud or a Spring um, user, uh, in Roar, you'll have support for that as well as uh, you know Java EE and reactive type programming, as well as Node.js uh, uh, runtimes. So you can use Roar as uh, you know to run your current workloads as well as you are uh, safe for future type uh, you know greenfield development of microservices. Uh, MicroProfile is an open source uh, project, uh, truly owned by the community and managed by the community, where Spring is really managed by a single. A vendor, uh, namely Pivotal. And we fully support uh, MicroProfile and Roar uh, and certified Spring Boot and Cloud, which I already mentioned. So what are the advantages of using uh, MicroProfile? Uh, as I mentioned, it's an open uh, community-based uh, specification. There is no single vendor that manages the project. Uh, it's really the community. Uh, the open source implementation of MicroProfile is Wildfly Swarm. Uh, it's, it's a project that is moving fast and innovating fast, uh, is constantly improving, and is introdu introducing a new capability um, um, in specification and implementation uh, at, a faster, uh, at a fast pace. Uh, if you are a Java EE um, developer uh, or a company that has uh, a lot of Java EE developers with uh, you know, long and uh, expertise and experience in this, uh, in Java EE, then there's little to no learning curve uh, when it comes to using MicroProfile. Uh, also, uh, MicroProfile is delivered as a container-based, uh, um, in a container-based uh, polyglot platform, uh, Red Hat OpenShift uh, application runtime, like I mentioned before. So a couple of words about uh, this, uh, about Java EE. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Oracle announced that Java EE is moving to the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, we see this as a, as a, as a great move uh, and uh, great for the future of Java EE. Uh, Eclipse uh, Foundation is, uh, has a strong experience and involvement uh, with Java EE and related technologies. Uh, the Eclipse Foundation is vendor friendly and vendor neutral. And, um, and we believe that uh, actually the, the last bullet here um, are uh, some of the major points included in the Oracle announcement. Uh, Oracle believes that uh, you know, they're able to transition Java EE rapidly by using Eclipse 
uh, create a community-friendly um, uh, processes for evolving the platform and leverage complementary projects uh, such as MicroProfile, and that's where th these two relate. So what assets are moving to Eclipse? This uh, list uh, all the assets from Java E that are moving to Eclipse. Uh, you can read this uh, at your spare time, in your spare time. And uh, again, there's benefit, uh, this move has benefits to Java developers, enterprises, and obviously Red Hat. Um, for Java developers, they all have a channel for uh, their innovation. Uh, the project will, know, uh, will be um, owned by uh, the community. Uh, for uh, enterprises, uh, Java will continue to innovate for, uh, for their needs as they move from apps to containers. And for Red Hat, uh, we support Java EE and EAP, as well as in ROAR, as I mentioned, and also EAP running on OpenShift, uh, our container-based uh, platform, using Docker and Kubernetes. Uh, benefits uh, to customer customers, um, uh, you know, again, uh, just emphasizing that now Java EE is going to be community-powered. Uh, we're hoping that uh, the release schedule will, will speed up a bit uh, uh, once uh, Java E uh, move. Actually, I should say, I should not use Java E anymore. The new name is, is for this, the project under Eclipse is called E for J. And it'll be an evolution uh, for Java E, not really a revolution. I uh, just want to close up with a call to action for uh, everybody. Uh, I've included here some links uh, in this slide uh, to visit, uh, for you to visit the MicroProfile.io website, uh, Wildfly Swarm website, uh, Roar, uh, there's a link to the Roar announcement. Um, also, uh, there is a Roar, um, there is a Roar uh, web page as well, a landing page that you can go there too. Uh, as well as the beta, uh, we announced uh, the beta this, this week and it's available uh, for anyone, anybody that would like to participate in that program. And there's a link also for the value of the Red Hat subscription that shows you and uh, lists all the benefits uh, of, uh, uh, you know, that a subscription by Red Hat gives you. And finally, just, you know, if you have any questions, further questions, please contact your Red Hat account executive. Uh, also, if you'd like to participate in our tech program for Roar. And that's all I had. Thank you very much.